Greetings, programs. This is Wretch, and welcome back to We the Revolution. And Robespierre is dead, guys, and I'm very curious to see where the story is going to go from here. Um, I thought that may have been the end of the game, but I got a message um, before the last stream telling me there's a lot more game to play. So I'm looking forward to seeing that, because with Robespierre dead, there's going to be a serious power vacuum. And uh, let's just go and see how bad it sucks. Act 2, Day 15. So right now we have 20 Reputation, um, 20 Good Vibes with the Revolutionaries, 20 Good Vibes with the Common Folk, and minus 3 with the Aristocrats. So all things considered, it could be a lot worse. Let's just see how worse it's going to get. Fingers crossed. All right. So, let us go ahead and look at our case file. <laughs> the tension. Wait a minute, didn't we do this one? I could have sworn that we did. Wait, hold on one sec. Hey, Kath! Great to see you all here. We left on this one. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what. We're going to go ahead and just go through it, and we're going to read the case file and just kind of just go with the flow here. The 19-year-old widow of plotter Count Cyril de la Montaigne is accused of assaulting an officer. Once again, apologies to the French people and the French language. The incident took place during the public execution of her husband, who was sentenced to death three months earlier. According to the file, he was planning to assassinate the main leaders of the revolution. The decapitation took place in front of the Paris City Hall. Soon afterwards, the captain of the National Guard, Roger Plessy, lost an eye, allegedly at the hands of Countess de la Montaigne. It is said that the Countess led a commotion in the crowd and then cast a stone in the direction of Captain Places, who was standing on the scaffold. The victim saw her in the crowd and the Countess was immediately detained by the guards who were keeping watch during the execution. Everything points to the fact that the Captain's injury was not collateral damage but the direct result of a deliberate attack. It was him who discovered the plot and arrested the Count and four of his accomplices, all aristocrats related to the pre-revolutionary royal court. Now deprived of one of his eyes, Captain Places ignores the age, sex, and pregnancy of the Countess, accusing her of counter-revolutionary activity and demanding the highest punishment for her. I actually do remember reading this at the end of the last stream. Okay, well, let's go ahead and get some que- We got four, only four questions to reveal. Really? Casting a stone? Inciting a riot? Is that the accusation? Yo! Okay. We have to be careful here. This could be potentially really bad. Method. Oh no. Okay, there's an accusation we cannot mess up now. Alright, well that didn't go well. Um, my day's been okay, Michi. Just busy day at work. Kill the counter-revolutionary! Away with the aristocracy! Are they insane? <sighs> Bloody coward. Citizen, what is your name? Countess Isabelle de Le Montier. I do not think I am threatened by your stern face. My family and I have already been hurt enough by your revolution. Did you hear the audacious cow? Order. The accused is advised to cooperate with the court. Remember that your life is not the only one at stake. Neither I nor my unborn child are guilty of Plesius' disability. 
Sure, the stone threw itself in the air to smash my eye. Also, it's simply outrageous of you to hide behind an unborn child. You should be ashamed. Well, we've got a problem here, guys. We have used all of our stuff. Um... Yeah. Yes, it is a lady. A pregnant lady. Well, let's look at the verdict here, since we don't really have a whole lot of options. If we go death penalty, the common folk will be upset, but the aristocracy will be happy. And if we acquit, the aristocracy will dislike us even more, and the revolutionaries will dislike us as well. Well... Did you throw the stone that hurt the victim? I do not know who cast it, but I'm glad they did not miss. The captain claims it was you. It's hard not to believe him since he was observing the whole event from the scaffold. Look at me, and look closely. I am not well built. I am five months into my pregnancy and I was cut off from the scaffold by soldiers and the crowd. He was at least 20 yards away. How could I hit him from that far? You're acting with heated emotions, and they're known to reveal unexpected strength. I was unable to do anything but cry. You were as angry as you are now. You say so, but anger would be justified in a situation like that. And people can do many things when angry. All right, well, this is the defendant confessed to the crime. No. Was her act counter-revolutionary in nature? Yes. How did the countess try to bribe officer place? Oh, I have no idea. Like, can we speak to the... Oh, man, we can't even talk to the... We can't even talk to him about what happened. I'll tell you what, guys. I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm calling a mulligan on this real quick. Because we need a little bit more info there. <laughs> Mulligan! <laughs> Alright. So, let's try this again. Inciting the riot was the motive. Right? And no, that was the meth. Ah. That was the method. Widow of a plotter. The offender's personality. Discup casting the stone was the accusation. There we go. And then discovery of the plot was the motive. All right, now we're we're good to go with this. We could have went ahead and let him go, but I need all the uh, question or let her go, but I need all the questions for the report here. So. Kind of get through all this. And holy crap, these are all positive influences because I guess she, you know, being pregnant and garners a lot of sympathy with the jury. So let's go ahead and ask the question right off the bat. Do you admit to throwing a stone in the direction of the victim? Because he was responsible for your husband's death? Regrettably, I am not responsible for hurting that scoundrel. He should be the one decapitated for more reasons than just my husband's death. What do you mean? I gave myself to him. I did it because he promised my husband immunity in exchange. Now I am pregnant with his child. Do you want to say something, Plessy, you bastard? 
She's lying! That bloody bitch! It's a lie, Monsieur le Judge. You should gag her. Any woman could say that. We must have evidence. I will give birth to that child, Plissy, so that everyone can see the resemblance. Order. Do I really need to repeat myself? Bring in Captain Placey as a witness. How would you comment upon the remarkable statement given by the defendant? The sheer fact that you're asking me about this is a scandal. On my honor, I did not feel the belly of that witch. The defendant seems rather certain of it. Did you have intercourse? Did you accept such a dishonorable bribe? I have lost an eye. How am I supposed to serve my country now? Answer the question. The defendant visited me the day before her husband's trial and asked me to intercede on his behalf. I refused. Hmm. And how can you be so sure that it was the accused who threw the stone? I heard there were many people crowded around the gallows. Only one stone was thrown. People were hitting each other, but nobody would dare raise their hand against an officer who was only following orders. <laughs> you have not been paying attention, have you? That does not prove anything. No, it does not. But when a woman yells, death to the treacherous guards right after you beheaded her husband, there's no better explanation. Did you see it? I saw her, and I saw the stone coming from where she was standing. What's there to think about? Oh! Wow. We actually do have the ability to uh, kill her if we'd want to. So let's go to the report. The defendant has not confessed to a crime. The act was counter-revolutionary. Uh, she gave herself to him to bribe. And according to the witness, what was the defendant yelling? Death to the treacherous guards. The reaction seemed to be minimal. Yeah, I'm curious too. So, if we do death penalty, that's actually going to put us in pretty good shape. So, what do you guys think? Should we go ahead and should we kill her? Or should we let her go? Because the rest of the questions are just going to lower the jury's favor. Or lowered the jury's opinion into the acquit. We basically have one chance to um, behead if we need to. It really can go either way. You know what? This seems like the blinded guard is trying to get out of a scandal, assuming she's telling the truth. Let's go ahead and ask about the riot, because I actually am more inclined to release her just for no other reason than she's pregnant. So, let's see. Did you incite a riot to carry out your revenge on the victim? I did not incite anything. All that I remember was falling on a man standing behind me. There was a fight, and then the soldiers pulled me from the crowd. So you do not remember much? No. Then you cannot be certain that you did not cast the st or then you cannot be certain that you did not cast the stone. And then 
We throw. We already went through this dialogue, but we'll go ahead and. Oh, that actually lowered it. Oh no, yeah, more in two. Hey, Ani. Describe your involvement in the riot. I was not at all involved. Why would I incite or take part in it? Would that bring my husband back to life? Considering the Count's crimes, it is hard to believe that his wife would not be prone to activities that endanger public safety. I had nothing to do with my husband's activities. My only guilt, as you can see, is being born in court and not in some marketplace. Yeah, I think I've seen enough here. Uh, we got the reports filed out. The aristocracy is not going to like it. Maybe we'll have some quick judgments to even it out, but we're going to go ahead and acquit. Oh, here we go. Anita Lemetia, the manager of an orphanage, accepted money from men to let them sexually abuse children. During a raid, soldiers walked in on three perverts who unfortunately managed to evade and escape punishment. Well, I guess we're not going to get that aristocracy bonus. Uh, Nathaniel Boulet, a carpenter, walked Marie Claude Ennett, a factory worker, home after a dance. Despite her clear objections, he allegedly entered her apartment and raped her. And Jacques Gavreau, a construction worker, witnessed the attempted theft of his tools. He caught and beat the thief, Jean Goulin, with a spade. Gavro's colleagues claimed that if they had, they had not intervened, he would have killed the criminal. Eh. We'll call that good. Four-hour naps are always excellent. The verdict in the case of Countess Isabel de la Montaigne is not guilty. Lead the defendant out. What a coward! Are aristocrats still so privileged? Away with a law like that! But we got four out of four, so that's good. First time you've been in a hospital since your dad died? It was free. Oh, I'm sorry, Michi. Is everything alright? Hey, Okami. Alright. The die is cast, guys. Uh oh. Okay, I thought the game just crashed there. Your eyes were never so empty. But today, I want you to be proud of me. Whoa. Come with me, Monsieur Le Juge. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, Michi. Son. Oh, oh God. Welcome, brother. Oh, it's Bruno. You were in the dark for so long. Oh. No? Is that really you? How... How is it even possible? You were told what you were supposed to think. I had to die as our father's favorite son so that I could be born again. While you have been leading a comfortable domestic life, I was crawling in the mud of a battlefield. What a twist! We all thought you were dead! It was much easier that way, wasn't it? I was dead, and have been through hell, dear brother. Kali abandoned me. Every door closed at the mere sound of my name. That was when hell reached for me. I enrolled in the army, hoping for a noble death. Instead, I was captured, taken, and I suffered. The enemies played a game of dice with me. If I won, I would be free. 
But for each round I lost, I would also lose a hand. I won the first one, but the second... I was able to escape, then started planning my revenge on our family, our father. On everyone who had disowned me. Revenge? On us? You should lay the blame on Clément Rinard. He was the one to... I blame you all. Father, you, France. You want to hurt your own family? You disowned me, as God disowned Cain. Father abandoned his own son, and you did not even try to defend me. I was young. Now you are an adult, and our father will watch your fall from grace. As far down as you can go. True. He will eventually abandon you, as he did me. I have realized that death will not hurt him as much as watching his other son reach the bottom and become a villain, too. And you did extremely well. You destroyed them. The Roland. Pash and his daughter. Gobel and his bastard son. And now, Robespierre. He kind of deserved he did everything it, though. according to my plan. All I needed to do was awaken your desire. I made sure that you would fall with me, right before Father's eyes. Now, he will see that we are equal. Was my son's death also part of your plan? I executed him through the hands of Renard oh. and your beloved mentor. I visited him and made him believe the story of his imprisoned son. Then, he also became one of us, a villain. He helped me to kill your child in order to save his own. See, I needed my own revolution. A place for people you call criminals, because they do not fit in your society. I lead an army of outcasts in Paris. An army of the sons and daughters left behind after you decapitated their mothers. People who have lost everything because of the revolution were expelled, forced to move to a foreign land. So he's got a huge a army. Days, we will attack Paris and build a new home on its ruins. A place where a father will always keep an eye on both his sons. Are you insane? Wait until you hear what I intend to do with your second son. Who? He's not done anything. He must pay for the sins of his father. Everyone must. Just as I paid for the cowardice of ours. He will play two rounds of dice. Each round you lose, he will lose a hand. That is the same price I had to pay. Now it's your son's turn. The price is suitable for the sins you are guilty of. Oh my god. You have killed every person that would be brave enough to face me. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, we need to do a roll again. Oh, that was so poor. A hundred. Oh, okay. The. Oh. That's good. That is very good. Okay, let's, uh... 
240 is good. Let's see. The blood is on your hands, not mine. I won again. Whew. Only 120 this time. Four sixty. Oh, there's some sixes. We still got one more. Okay. He's at 660, guys. We're at 620. It's all going to depend on this. Ooh, hello. 840. Um. We won. You think that you know what it means to suffer. Wait until I show you. We gotta ruin two games. One, two, three, five. Oh no. It was the. We don't have any rerolls. He's gonna, he's gonna destroy us. Look at those, the sixes. You will fail and break our father's heart. Only then will my revenge be complete. First round was a red herring, it's rigged. Yeah, I can see that, Ani. Five. Oh my god. <laughs> Our son's about to lose a hand. There's nothing we can do. Oh, with the quad five. We are done here. We settled the first score, but that is not all I have prepared for you. Far from it. He won every round. Ramel, my friend. Oh, our spy buddy. He saved me. He saved my son. But he could not save what was already broken into a million pieces. Her eyes were not empty. Oh, Rommel saved him. Her eyes. Ooh, wifey is upset at us. That's not good. So it was him. This whole time. I'm sorry. I did not know. There's no way I could have. Was he the one who mutilated Bernard? He ordered his thugs to do it. I cannot believe that I raised such a monster. It's not over yet. I am going to kill him. He will not stop hurting us unless I do. I must kill him. I lost my son long ago. Then I got him back for little more than a few seconds, only to lose him again. I'm not going to defend someone who has reached the bottom for a second time. There is only darkness in his life. 
as in mine. Pardon? Nothing. We, we need to stick together. True enemy. Oh, okay. So the sun's not ha happy with us. I that makes sense. Oh dear. Okay. That could have been worse. He could have lost his hand. And oh. The guy... What's happening? They're clearing the board. Oh, they're all clearing the board. Your brother's army will arrive in four days. Okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Um. Increase influence. We gotta. Gotta get our boy. I think we're gonna need all of our influence points. So I'm just gonna go ahead and commence persuasion. Do I still have my little cheat? Yes, I do. Uh, attached manipulation carefree careless no opinion careless attached manipulation perfect perfect strong strong No, it's basically you find out that our brother has been the one doing everything, pulling all the strings. Okay, Raphael, you are now free. And I want you right here. Well, actually... How does this get... Agent was injured. Oh, lovely. Okay. He can't quell. I can't quell the riots right now, which is unfortunate. Um, I'm going to go ahead and send Jacques over here to, to lower the um, fervor that the Muscadins are inciting in our home base. And I'm going to have to wait for uh, Clovis to get in better shape so we can go in and take care of this. It looks like the board got completely clear. Day 16. Oh, God. What was so important to bring you here, Marat? Is it really so important that we cannot discuss it at my house in the evening? I would rather do it here, surrounded by other people, as I'm afraid that I would not leave your house alive. I do not understand. I am in possession of, anom of anonymous written documents that describe your actions since you became a judge of the tribunal. Uh-oh. Betrayals, murders, political bribery. Are you still human? Or am I talking to the devil? This is all Clement Renaud's doing. That man has already destroyed my father, and a few days ago he threatened to do the same to me if I would not be obedient to him. Citizen Fidel, whatever is written there is not true. Those lies are only supposed to destroy... Do not make a fool of me. Today, Renard was found dead at the back of the Café Procope. Know that I will dig into this until I know your every wrongdoing, every murder, deceit, and betrayal. I, 
I can assure you that there's no need. Focus on assuring your family that you're not a monster, because I intend to be ruthless. Good times? Today we only have several minor cases to deal with. Okay, what? Where's the hierarchy? Your brother never died. He enlisted into the army after his banishment, however. He deserted during the battle. Since then, he has worked at taking vengeance upon his family. On your father, Bruno was the actual source of your misery. He planned your journey and motivated you the entire way. Okay, we got a lot of cases here. Francis Allard, 72 years old, happily drove his street cart around Birofle, even though he was almost too drunk to stay in the saddle. He was stopped by his neighbors, who testified that Allard's grandchildren were passengers in the cart, and the situation could have ended in tragedy. Yes, not enough to kill the man, though. Whoa! Okay. Leopold Labelle has been selling exotic stones that are supposed to reduce the humidity and stench of the city. His target customers were mainly old people. The stones were very expensive, yet a very brief investigation was enough to prove that they're just river pebbles. Not enough to kill a man. Officer of the guard Barnaby Drake refused to chase a thief who had stolen a chest full of buns from the confectioner. Drudge explained that as a young man, he had been shot in the knee with an arrow. <laughs> Used to be an adventurer like you. Mikhail Poppin gained his position in the Chancery of the National Convention through his uncle, Blaise Poppin's intercession. In order to advance his career, Mikhail spread rumors about his manager, claiming that he secretly supported the monarchist. That's not that. Gilbert Leroux, a breeder of animals, animals raised and killed for their fur, paid a significant amount of money to Deputy Gatain Pasquia, who in exchange was supposed to convince his colleagues to vote for a rise in the duty of furs imported from Eastern Europe. Now, this is our opportunity to get good stats with the aristocrats right now. The butcher, Gerald Carpentier, was found to have been adding horse meat to his sausages and cooked meats. He would buy it at a low cost from local farmers. There have been no reports of food poisoning, but believe it's only a matter of time until we hear some. So until that happens... Okay, that the aristocrats are now in pretty decent... That we're almost in the middle. The revolutionaries are less than pleased with us, as are the common folk, but... We actually didn't kill anyone today. Okay. Let's see. Let's see what happens here. Oh no. Marat's Revolutions. Marat was nothing but thorough. This morning, Parisians were greeted by a special issue of his newspaper, in which he summed up your actions since taking office. He wrote about your elimination of the Rolands, how you exterminated the Girardins on Robespierre's command. He talked at length about how you destroyed the lives of the mayor and his daughter. The Muscadins will learn that you framed Beatrice for espionage. Each of your sins, minor and major alike, was described with nigh analytic solitus. <laughs> solicitude of someone who had been watching your every move for a while now. Your brother wasn't kidding. This is far from over. Okay, only minus two to some of our stuff. That could have been a lot worse. Oh, he lost his hand! Marat dragged your sins into the daylight. Your loved ones have stopped meeting your eyes. Son, oh, son does not like. Our son is very quickly about to hate us. Okay, please heal yourself, Clovis. Your brother's army will arrive in three days. Yes, indeed. Let's quell the riots, because a riot is an ugly thing. And no need to lure enemy agents. And there is nothing that Jacques can really do but follow the Muscadin around and lower fervor. We 
day 17. And more minor cases. Where are we on the... Okay, could be worse. Marquis... Our Marquis Bach deliberately misled Jan Poulin, who brought who bought a country mansion from him. Bach made him believe that for his money he would be get the palace, the garden, and part of the surrounding forest. In fact, the forest belongs to his neighbor. The truth came out when Poulin moved into his new house. That's not a death. Dear Revolutionary Live Journal, it's been a hell of a month. Hey, Seraphim. Um, no one is dead, but we found out who the big puppet master of the entire game is, and that is... Bruno, our brother, who is still very much alive and basically calculated all of these plans, including the death of our kid, and we had to play a game of dice against him, and our other son lost his hand. It has been kind of crazy. During one of his first patrols, Alblien Loz, a young officer of the guard, let his older colleagues talk him into firing his musket in the street. Fortunately, nobody was injured, but the bullet reached a storefront and destroyed a mannequin along with the clothes adorned. You go free. Jean-Marie Pollard has been accused of deception. Adrienne Gouliet purchased a defective coffee grinder from him. When she wanted to return the faulty object, the merchant offered to sell her nine tiny components that would actually make the grinder faster, more efficient, and actually work. Go ahead and let him go. Martine Sartre, a prostitute, was serving a range of high-ranking guard officers as well as at least one British agent who we have not already sentenced to death. We are sure that she was paid for whispering military secrets. Oh, she was paid for whispering military secrets to him whenever he joined her in bed. Ah, uh, you know what? At that point, drink. We'll go ahead and put her to death. A constitutional priest, Jean Cote, has been caught melting down gold that was intended for the revolution and selling it. He managed to find people who saw him visiting brothels and drinking. We suspect that the priest was having fun at the expense of the state and using its money. And Vicar Julian Larde has been seen beating three children who were playing cards in the street. The accused claims that they were playing war, a game that in his opinion triggers violence. Well, since you would have no qualms beating up children... Okay, well, that could have been worse. I am worried, guys. Oh. Citizen Fidel, they've found another body. Who is it this time? Stop pretending. You know who. Do not play games with me. I thought that... <clears throat> Never mind. Citizen Marat was found dead. We knew that was going to happen. Marat had it coming. Oh! A crazy Girondin got to him. I'm not sure if he paid for his sins. Or my own. Get him out. Like the painting. I like that. Oh, Lord. Even from beyond the grave, Marat can deal substantial damage. The night before his death, he was able to typeset the last issue of his paper, focusing on your most recent misdeeds. He claimed that you were the one behind Gobel's death. You, the true mastermind, not Gobel's son. The paper also described how you overthrew Robespierre only to gain absolute power in France. There's no need to tell you what else was written. You know the truth. You know that his words contain more truth than lies. Everyone feels the same, even if they are not sure. And your family knows what you're capable of. In the eyes of Paris, you were a monster who was exposed by Marat. A monster who killed and buried the revolution. 
We've lost a lot of rep, minus two influence, and minus one among all of our factions. Hi, everybody! <laughs> Marat continues, Onslaught from Beyond the Grave, your family's contempt for you deepens ever even more. Our son now hates us. Your brother's army will arrive in two days. Yes, but we've we control the city. So yay for us, I suppose. Residents. <laughs> Can we spend time with our family? Political salon. Um I'm gonna spend two influence and spend time with the family. Gets us to do a family special action. There's... Okay. Um, let's move all of our troops here to the middle. We've got all the districts. Day 18. Oh, okay, we actually have a case. Oh, no. Okay, death penalty. Holy crap. Oh, the aristocracy will adore us if we do. Okay. We are walking a fine line here, guys. All right. Let's see what the case is. Traitor! He will rot, bitch. Please introduce yourself. My name is Charlotte Corday. You have been accused of murdering Citizen Marat. Yes, I did it. Well, we rarely see people here confess so willingly. The defendant is Charlotte Corday, residing in Cain. She openly declares her sympathy for the Giratins. The woman Mary or er, the woman murdered Jean Paul Marat. She was detained at the scene of the crime and confessed immediately. According to our information, the woman displays an intense dislike of the Jacobins and anyone who contributed to the fall of the Giratins. She arranged a meeting with Marat under the pretext of turning in a group of her comrades who had supposedly planned an uprising in Cain. Marat's servants remained vigilant and initially did not let the woman near Jean-Paul, but allegedly the host reprimanded them and told them to let the supposed informer in. The man was sitting in his bath, as rumor had it he suffered from a skin disease that was eased by long baths. It seems he suspected nothing, as we found none of the deceased weapons near the bathtub. After a short conversation, Corday thrust a knife between his ribs. Marat cried for help, but had little chance of surviving after being so badly wounded. When the servants ran in, Corday was standing at the window, looking out as though she were examining the landscape. She'd offered no resistance during her arrest, but tightly gripped a copy of Plutarch's Parallel Lives. I do not know if it is any good, I have not read it. On the way to her cell, she repeated many times that she had been acting on her own and was particularly keen on emphasizing that there was no man behind her act. The guards probably did not fully believe her as she began to shout in the corridor that she was a virgin. Yet, who would want to copulate with a lunatic like her? Murad is dead. So, if we acquit... Yeah, that's done. We have to kill her. So we just gotta get the uh, jury... The defendant confessed to the crime? Yes. Was her act counter-revolutionary in nature? Yes. What was the murder weapon? It was a knife. Did the defendant turn in her accomplices? She was working alone. Possibly. Let's unlock these questions first. We do have a trap. Oh, 
I am not even look Plutarch's book is not even needed here. Stabbed with a knife as the method, right? Uh -huh. Um, acting alone. Ooh, we got this is. Hmm. The alleged. Acting alone method. Okay, good. Supporter of the Giridans offender's personality. That one's easy enough. The alleged denunciation. Motive? Oh. Stab with a knife as... Evidence? Okay, nope. Offender- oh no. Alright, we have used all of our stuff. Um, the bath. Wouldn't be evidence. The alleged denunciation. What was the alleged denunciation? Oh! Jean-Paul Marat, he was our brother, one of the informal leaders of the revolution. Everyone loved him for his apt articles in which he highlighted the faults of the enemies to revival. Perhaps he was too sharp with his conclusions, but could he have been otherwise? Yeah, thrust a knife in the ribs. Turning it- ah, oh, okay. That's method. And the bath. Well, either one of these things, it doesn't really matter. I do, Blue Tark's book doesn't really seem to matter in this, so... Oh, that was the trap. Whoops. It's okay, though. We, we know exactly what we need to do. What you have done is a blow to all of France. Marat was an outstanding citizen of Paris, devoted to the revolution. He was scum, a monster. Only in Paris could someone like him be respected as the savior of the nation. To us in Cain, for many people across France, he was and always will be an ordinary criminal. And also for those companions whom you intended to turn in. Do you think anyone will tell you the truth? You, the people who feed the guillotine with fresh blood? The transparent actions of the authorities were to be the foundation of the revolution. Perhaps in Paris, but in the countryside it's now worse than ever. We used to blame the king for our hunger, and now we blame ourselves because it was us who put you in power. A blood-stained knife was found on the scene of the crime. Is it yours? Yes. I bought it long, long, long before. Anyone who was secretly against another could administer such a blow. With an ordinary knife and no need for the performance, you give every day on the guillotine. Or no need for the performance, you give every day on the guillotine. Well, that was easy. Are we supposed to believe that you acted on your own? It doesn't take a regiment of soldiers to stab someone with a knife. And nobody helped you to plan it. You made it particularly clear. I will say this loud and clear. I am aware that Monsieur le Judge had a dispute with Marat, but let everyone here know that I was not instructed to do this by Judge Fidel. All those coincidences. I don't need a man to administer justice. I don't need a man to do anything. My own strong will is sufficient. Why did you underline... Because your minds are unable to accept the idea that a delicate woman could kill. Murat was the same. Fair enough. Do you want to turn in your companions? There were no companions, as there was no uprising. 
I knew that the vision of a big conspiracy would convince Marat to meet with me. She's one shrewd bitch. You came from Ken? That is a long way from Paris. The journey passed quickly, and I was focused on its purpose and the pleasure of imagining Marat as a bleeding creature. You made sure to wear a beautiful outfit as well. A beautiful outfit for the guillotine. Not for Marat. You're acting as if you want to die. Such is the price of freedom and equality. I at least agree with Marat on one point. The change that is necessary for France must be introduced by force. I added my unswerving strength of will to that end. Okay, well, I've heard enough. Sign that down. And death penalty, because that's the only thing that we can do right now, guys. Everything else is pretty much... Bad, bad, bad. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping that Bruno shows up and puts me out of my misery. I sentence and citizen Charlotte Corday to be guillotined. Lead the condemned out. That's right! Yeah, drag the pig out for slaughter. Alright. No. Ah, I was hoping for some smaller cases so we could get our uh, reputation back with the aristocracy. It is getting more and more insane. So right now, yeah, we need to uh, do a speech. And speak to the common folk. Attached manipulation. Withdrawn manipulation. No opinion. Carelessness. Perfect, strong, perfect. Okay, the people are satisfied. Huzzah, huzzah. Just make it quick. Noted. You find a large side uniform on a hook. Only one employee is big enough to fit it. Your favorite court guard, Raphael Clovis. You find a short letter in one of the pockets, and some parts of it stand out in particular. I'm leaving the service. I can't do this any longer, and too much blood on my hands. The rats are fleeing the sinking ship. That sucks. Terror is nothing but swift justice. Robespierre used to say that. And now an army of outcasts marches towards us to present their interpretation of those words. Do you come to arrest me? I came to tell you that certain people believe everything you did, you did for the benefit of I France. think it is, Gath. Who are you? Officer Thomas Alexandre Dumas from the French army at your service. Do you believe in what those few say about me? Most deputies of the convention fled once they learned of the approaching army. The reinforcements that will be able to save us will take a dozen or so days to reach Paris. Do you believe I did everything because of France? No. But as far as I heard, you know the enemy better than any one of us. <laughs> He's honest, at least. As a commander, I certainly appreciate that asset, and as a human being, I know that brotherhood is especially important when someone has fallen. You reach the bottom, but there are people willing to give you a chance to redeem yourself. I think you're talking to the wrong person. I am talking to a predator. I am talking to a person who is not averse to killing other citizens. And that is what awaits us. We will have to ruthlessly murder Frenchmen who stand on the other side of the barricades. I am talking to a murderer, because that is how you are known to those who are afraid of you. As ghastly as it sounds, you are exactly who we need. You said yourself that reinforcements are a dozen or more days away. 
That is why I gathered an army of loyal people. I will entrust them to you under one condition. Did you say an army? Look for yourself. A truly revolutionary army. Wow. The poor and the wealthy, white and black people, all marching side by side. They came here to protect Paris. You mentioned one condition. Make me a general. The first black commander of that higher rank in the whole of France. I do not have such power. Okay, it's not the but author. You do. You still hold the power of the guillotine, remember? Support me, and the army will be yours. Regardless of their origin or race, those people believe that if they are scared of you, our enemy should be even more terrified. Hand me a piece of paper and a pen, General. Okay. Are, is the game going to change again? Are we going into, like, combat times? Oh, Lord. Yes, we are. Recruitment. The number of units given to you depends on your reputation. Uh, Levé en masse. Infantry, city guard, musketeers, and artillery. Okay. The whole of Paris is fighting. The political salon will be transformed into headquarters, and the hideout will be transfor transformed into a help center. The printing house will stop operating. Whoa. The garrison generates reinforcements every turn. The higher your reputation, the more troops will join you. People are trying to avoid the enemy's cruelty in every section of Paris. Protect them for as long as possible. Your reputation depends on it. Your brother's army will arrive tomorrow. Toggle the view of refugees remaining in the districts on and off. The physician treats your injured troops and provides a bonus to health points. Remember, if the troops die, the physician dies with them. Holy crap. Okay. A collection of people from all segments of society. Their strength in numbers. Trained soldiers are good in close combat and for defending against attacks. Shooters who used to defend the city day by day. They perform ranged and melee attacks. Trained shooters who are most effective in ranged attacks but can also fight in close combat. And artillery. Citizens in... Okay. So we have got... Civilians in the sector. Zero out of twelve. Okay. I don't know. Physicians in active. This action was already chosen. Okay. You're already seizing this building. Hideouts. Oh, we're seizing all of this right now. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, Michi. So, I'm not sure... What do we do here? Do we just move... 12? Oh! Okay. I see, I see. Do we have to move people right now? Actually, this... I guess this cross area means this is where the nastiness is going to be. So let's do... A max of 12, huh? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Hmm. Second row, second row, third row. Oh, all right. Well, let's do... Right now, because it looks like this thing may be actually... 
Let's do two artillery. I have no idea what we're doing, guys. So, um, let's do city guard. You do a max of twelve. Oh, can we not move city guard here now? Okay, yes we can. Maybe four city guard. Six infantry, two city or four city guard, two artillery. And for the rest, I guess the garrison, I, I kind of want to leave it alone right now because I think it's only going to be attacking this section. So let's just say end of day. And we'll see how badly I just messed that up. Hack three. Oh. Fraternity. Day one. Oh, and minor cases. How nice. Um, Colonel Gaspard Picard, who's in charge of the artillery of the Eternal Army, was caught stealing building materials that are supposed to be used to build new barracks for the brigade, or at least that's what his subordinates are claiming. According to a report, he commissioned the transportation of several carts of bricks to his own mansion out of the day. We're going to go ahead and leave. let him live. Oh, crap. Uh, Marlene Roussel, young wife, had sexual intercourse with her husband's friend when caught red-handed. Okay, free. Dylan Bruget has been treating feminine diseases in a very peculiar way. He was found to have been lying to his patient, saying that they'd been cured. They had to buy very expensive medicine and spend the night with him. At least six women let him trick him. Unfortunately, we need to go ahead and let him go as well. We have to. We're having to play a balancing act right now, guys. Juliette Chapier, the believed daughter of a wealthy industrialist, poisoned her father so as to inherit his money sooner. We were informed of the plot conjured up by Juliet and a mysterious man after the burial of Gaspard. Let her go. Lisa Mesne has been illegally selling magic potions to young pregnant women. The substance facilitated miscarriage. Okay, that one we will go ahead and kill. Uh, one of the buildings in the center of Paris nearly burned down after 47-year-old Hugo Bassat, encouraged by a half-court of Anisette, decided to build a campfire in the middle of his apartment. Alright. Common people aren't happy, but the revolutionaries and the aristocrats are currently appeased. Now, I want to see what's going to happen here. Oh, Lord. Thank you for coming. How is he feeling? Like a young man who wasn't ready for what happened to him. Alexis, your brother paid me a visit. The one who was supposed to be dead. Jacques, let me finish. I respect the memory of our friendship. We have both helped each other in many ways, but I know now that, because of my loyalty to you, I participated in something very wrong. My brother is a monster. The amount of blood shed by the revolution has changed all of us into monsters. We can only hope that after we die, people will forget about us, and all of our wrongdoings will be blown away. You prefer to side with my child's murderer over me? Thanks to him, I finally understood what we did to our country by giving the power to uneducated people armed with axes and torches. We need to restore balance, and your brother is going to do that. He is a murderer. As are you and I. The only difference between him and us is that we will be that we will be honored with medals and statues. I don't want that kind of praise, tainted by crime and deceit. 
Now is my last chance to change my fate. What are you going to do? I do not know. I will probably leave Paris while it's still possible, then wait, and then adapt to the new situation. Your court guard ran away this morning, and Rommel? Well, it turns out he was always with your brother and did what was necessary to lead you to this moment. So you are all traitors. If that is how you see things, you have already failed. Goodbye, my friend. And we lost our, f our f folks. Oh, now Bernard despises us. What is this? You have to choose an action to see its description. Oh, like everything's just going to hate. Hate, hate, hate. When he was younger, Bernard would often sneak out and explore Paris's streets. Perhaps now his knowledge could help in saving refugees' lives. Provisions and medicine. Oh, yeah, nothing more we can do, really. There will be casualties. They are already here. The outcasts, the cursed ones. That is how they call themselves. The families of the victims of the revolution. The sons of those who were forced to run to other countries. Bruno looks like they a bomb villain. They their way in the dark for years, and there was no one who would console them. Now they want France for themselves. As we do. Oh, lordy. Okay. Okay, we got... We got more troops. Huzzah! The political, little, political salon has been transformed into headquarters. Choose its actions to facilitate your fight in Paris. You have been attacked. If you have no troops in the section, you will automatically lose. Okay. I think we're in good shape there. Before we do that... Build barricades. Units and sections that neighbor enemy sections will gain a bonus to defense. There's no enemy sections currently. Spend more time with family. I guess we could build barricades. Ah, I'm not going to worry about it right now. Oh no, I'd say Bruno definitely has a point. It's just the methods he went about it. <laughs> it's just like the dude in Big Lebowski. You're not wrong. All right. Let's go ahead and do this fight. Oh! Intrigue. Germain de Stel. Madame de Stel has used the city's movement moment of weakness to fight for women's rights. I'm not one to judge the motivations of other people, but if we do not stop her today, we may not wake up tomorrow. <laughs> okay. Declaration for women's right. rights. Cool. I want to fight a battle. Yes. You can fight the battle on your own or accept General Dumas' help. The battle will be fought automatically. Each of the enemy generals have their favorite tactics and tricks. 
67% effectiveness versus... Okay. I'm terrified. Let's see what happens. Oh my god. During each turn of battle, a certain number of people will escape the section. The longer you hold out in the battle, the more people you will save. That's a lot of cannons there. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, yeah, 12. How many infantrymen do I have? He's aggressive, so he's going to, uh... I need to get those cannons out of here, so we're gonna go with this first. Neutral versus suppressive fire. Oh, man. <laughs> Residents escape. 450 civilians escape during the turn. Okay. And now we're just gonna hold the line with defense. It's the only thing we can do. Wow. 450 were civilians were rescued, 2,580 were killed. What did you just realize, Seraphim? Now might be a good time to uh, put in some barricades. Yeah, all the civilians are going to end up in one spot. All right, so now that we know this, we've got to go ahead and uh, get our troops distributed. All I can really do here is... Let's go first row infantry. Six. I can't, it basically barricades everything um, adjacent to an enemy territory. And we can't attack them anymore. I just realized. Um, garrison is full. I'm going to leave this to go right now, just to see what happens. I 
Oh, the number of Parisian survivors. I see. <sighs> Reputation plus four. Oh, God. Okay. Citizen, I am sure that you've already received your copy of the Declaration of Women's Rights. Let us meet in the evening so I can list our demands. Germaine de Stal. Women are born free and shall remain equal to men in rights. Social distinctions can only be founded on common necessity. The laws of nature and reason stand against all malign actions against society. All that is not defended by those laws, however wise and divine, cannot be prevented, and none shall be forced to do... Blah, 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 blah. Okay. Oh, crap. I was a soldier once. Prestige and justice. The supervisors of this noble building find those two virtues essential. Prestige and justice are superior to anything else. The day before yesterday, I had the pleasure of having a few drinks with one of your guards, and we talked about our memories. You are aware that serving in the army is an essential requirement for joining the court guard? It is non-negotiable, so this guard must have sold us a tissue of lies about his military service, and the certificate he managed to get is probably forged. Of course, we had had a few drinks. Discharge the guard from service, leave the guard in I'll investigate the matter. Right now, I don't really care who's dressed as what, as long as they have a weapon in hand. Death penalty. Ooh. Okay, everyone wants this person dead. A, str a, a rare occurrence. Midwife Cecia. I, that's me. Did you strangle Mr. and Oh, I need to read the Mr. and Miss Piquet's child. I had to, Monsieur le Judge. Unfortunately, the child was born a girl. You will burn in hell. What do you mean? You're a man, you wouldn't understand. I just want women to stop suffering. Then why do you strangle them? As I said, you wouldn't understand. She's crazy! Yeah, it's gonna give us some breathing room. The daughter of Jean and Marie Pic died immediately after birth. The father testified that he heard the child crying loudly and intensely, yet when he entered the room occupied by his wife, one servant and the midwife, his daughter was not breathing. The doctor called by Mr. and Mrs. Pic arrived the next day. He noticed strangulation marks on the infant's neck and he was the one who informed the guard. The investigator was unable to interrogate the parents as they were both in shock and filled with despair. We found numerous signs of the birth in the untidy room. Among them were forceps left by the midwife, who, as we learned from the servant, left in a great hurry. It looked as though she were escaping. We managed to establish the midwife's identity as Claudine Cessier. People say she has bad luck when it comes to delivering girls, as most of her infinite female patients did not make it. We decided to arrest her as a suspect. Investigators found an open Bible on her kitchen table. Evidence? Cecilia's Bible is an old, cheap, and worn-out edition. She has underlined numerous excerpts in pencil. Okay. <laughs> Guillotine. Now. Yes. Bible. Strangulation marks. Oh, we have... Ooh, that's a lot of traps. Fender's personality with the Bible, maybe? Yay! Servant. That's the trap. First cry. Forceps, instrument of crime, maybe? Aha! Oh, we avoided the traps! Huzzah! Was the child born alive? Yes, Monsieur Le Judge. Did you strangle it with your own hands? No, I... I have a special bead necklace. 
It would be faster if I just broke their necks, but I'm not able to do it. I put forward a proposal to immediately conclude this interrogation with a death sentence. Not yet. Citizen, how could you do something so terrible? I do it for them, Monsieur le Judge, not for myself. I have suffered enough, and they will not have to. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yes, was her act counter revolutionary in nature? Not really. Did the women confess during. Well, you know what? Let's get all the questions out here. Why did you leave the house in such a hurry? The child was dead. There was nothing more I could help them with. Did you charge them for the birth? No, I couldn't. Why? Let me ask you again. Why did you not take money from Mr. and Mrs. Pick? Stop tormenting me! I didn't do it for myself. I just want other women to have a better life than me. If there were fewer of us than men, our thousand-year nightmare will come to an end. This tiny girl's whole short life, or that tiny girl's whole short life was a nightmare. Do you believe in God, woman? No, Monsieur Le Judge. What about the Bible in your house? The Bible is not a holy book, but a manual for men so they can ruin our lives. Explain. The letter to the Ephesians, for example, instructs, Wives, submit yourself to your husbands as you do to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife. Men hear that in church and then treat women worse than animals. But are you not doing worse by killing them? I'm helping them. How, exactly? Men are dying in the war, so there are fewer and fewer of them. So women have to fight over them. If there are fewer women, men will finally begin to respect them. That woman is possessed. But men did not respect you. My father gave me to a man. He beat me for eight years until he finally drunk himself to death. The revolution stands against religious superstition. You do not have to. Does it? You fight for brotherhood, but you don't care for your sisters. Okay, that was what I needed to know. Uh, her husband was beating her for years, but she used to melt her own hands. Did the defendant accept money for the delivery? No. Oh, she used a necklace. Crap. I thought that she said she could have used the necklace, but didn't do it. It's okay. Everybody happy. And we definitely need to be talking during these um, executions. We need to get the our rep up. Oh, crap. I accidentally clicked. So, yes, we just sentenced her to death. That's not enough. Have her quartered. I will sleep better knowing she is not practicing her profession. Sorry. Be gone, foul pox on humanity. Yeah, you're not kidding. Okay. Attached, withdrawn, no opinion. Perfect, strong, perfect. All right, we've maxed out. They are satisfied. We get plus four reputation. Yet another man hurting women. Patriarchy. Pull the lever, Kronk. Right lever. Ooh. I promise not to take long. My case is rather obvious. Of course... I'm sure that nothing worse could come of this. 
changes. You do not like them, especially when you know they will happen soon. What kind of changes? The liberation of women, of course. I do not understand who is oppressing you. You! Men who have decided to rule over the country and take control of our fates. The Declaration of Women's Rights clearly explains it. Of course, your famous declaration. Your legacy. I have only given a few suggestions regarding that document, as I have another duty. Leading women to their ultimate success. Over the corpses of men, I assume? It doesn't have to be so. The Declaration must be accepted in its current form. We refuse to negotiate and will not agree to any settlements. If you resist, we will protest, and you will learn what it is like to fight without our support. Convincing people to accept such a great change, especially now. Since I first heard about you, you have done nothing but manipulate and scheme. I'm sure you'll manage. Remember that without us, you will lose. But with us, you may stand a chance. That is all we want. Equality. I believe that you overestimate women's power, madam. I have yet to see any of you on the battlefield, although the fight is supposed to be even. What is more important is whether or not you are ready to risk our revolt. You know what we want. We shall give you a chance to think it through. Goodbye, citizen. Well, that went well. Safe path, barricades... We already did barricades. Um, let's do a draft. Yeah, there we're lo we're gonna lose everyone except for maybe our dad. Yay for troops. Oh, these heading over here. The number of units given to you depends on your reputation. We got four more additional troops. And we have an intrigue. They're heading over. Ah, okay, so we can place our troops. All right. The garrison's full. Can we move? Nope. We can't move. We are going to be stuck with that. That is what it is, I suppose. Could move artillery there. Everything is already barricaded. Um... do three here well we need yeah okay Well, right now, we'll go ahead and set the rest of our troops here on the island. Um, this is this will be fun. The madame has used the city's moment of weakness to fight for women's rights. I'm not one to joke. Okay. Distel's proposition, or perhaps blackmail, forces us to take immediate and spontaneous action. She wants us to sign the Declaration of Women's Rights. If you comply without the support of other men, you may as well sign your own death sentence. You must convince them to accept the changes and give away the power they have promised their sons. Okay.
troops large frontline assault what do you what do, should we do guys should we go ahead and hand it off to our general yeah okay let's see what happens oh we won neat okay yeah, I figured battle is not Alexis's uh, strong point here, so. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and reinforce with artillery there. <laughs> Send in General Calrissian. Very much so. All right, let's go ahead and get these. We need to consolidate all of our troops right now, okay? and kind of get a better idea of what we have to work with. And I've got no problem having uh, Dumas fight our battles. That's what he's there for. He offered. We just need to make sure that he has troops to fight. So if he is, if he is right here, he can only attack these three areas. I don't think he can head over here. That's not adjacent. So... We need to go ahead and get... We don't have a whole lot of infantry. One, two, three. Let's go for... The max of 12 in each zone. I hope we can get some more artillery here soon. Yeah, if we have no troops in a section, it's automatically lost, but he's right here, and I'm not seeing any other area suddenly coming in. Second row, second row. So let's do... We've got so much cannon fodder. Might as well use it. And don't worry, we'll we'll reinforce this area with our remaining troops just in case. Yeah, move that right there. And then for our second row, five musketeers there. Five musketeers here. Five city guard here. And for right now, we're just going to put a force of eight and four right here in this area, just in case we get swerved somehow. Part of me actually wants to have my physician uh, go into one of the empty slots. What do you guys think? To stave off the losses? She's just kind of just sitting here. What do y'all think? When she dies, she's dead. Wherever she goes, the general has to fight that battle. Yeah. I'm going to move her right here into the center. And call it end of day. Okay, so we have almost 69,000 have escaped. 22,000 have died. Reputation is plus six, though. It's it's like uh, Niska. It's all about reputation. And reputation is the only thing keeping us going right now. Okay, minor cases. Let's do this. Um, we need to get in good with the revolution. Uh, Noel Motsisea, an experienced docker, gouged Marius Corbert's eye out during a fight. 
According to witnesses, he grabbed the victim's head and smashed into a wall. Unfortunately, there was a nail sticking out of it. Ooh. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and free you. Wishing to get a promotion in the Ordnance Foundry, Abraham Tatane told his superiors that his foreman had been sentenced to the guillotine for murder. The situation soon turned out to be false. That makes him a liar, not necessarily a... Farmer Didier Berlioz had a quarrel with Perrine Gisalt, who was cultivating a neighborhood field. At night, Berlioz set the field alight. As a result, several dozen acres of crops belonging to various farmers went up in flames. This is no mere vandalism. That... Oh, a detriment to France? Yes, that... Die, die, die. There you go. The bank clerk, Gregory Cartel, has been slandering a servant and accusing her of theft. We found out that she had quit her job. Fed out. Okay, that's not... Two officials, Alfred Bennell and Yves Lahe, beat up a messenger who spilt ink on some important papers. We found minor bruises and a small bump on the victim's head. The accused claimed that they yelled at the victim but did not hit him. Nathan Sayers eventually beat up his wife, who was 15 years his younger. The claim was made by her parents. Both the alleged culprit and his victim denied that such an incident to took place. Moreover, we found no bruises on her face. Um. Well, there's no... Ah. Okay, sorry. I, it's, it's a broken system. Living on the edge. Okay. They want to rule. What are they thinking? I'll beat some sense into my wife later. Just prepare our food and bear our children. Good God. No women will rule us! Remember your place! Or we will help you! Well, this is gonna go well. Oh, we are so, yeah. Oversensitive. Manipulation. Bullheaded. Humility. Withdrawn. Manipulation. Attached. Manipulation and withdrawn manipulation. So much manipulation. Strong, strong, perfect, strong, perfect. It's about as good as we're going to get. Oh, and they're irritated. Admit it. You did not expect this. And neither did I. They attacked when we were not looking. And now we have to give in to them. I know your blood is up, but the truth is, they do not want much. This consent will cost you little. Have you had too much to drink again? You are speaking as if we don't know our women well. They will walk all over us if we consent to this. Put yourselves in their shoes. They have not gained much from the revolution, unlike you. And they end up on the guillotine just as frequently. It's true. Who supported you when you were bearing the standards of the revolution? They carried them at your sides with you. But we can't treat them any better. <laughs> sure you can. Thanks to the revolution, you men have won equality and freedom. But women have remained in the background. They support us. But as soon as we get our rest, we drive them into a corner. Is this how we want to treat our women? No one puts baby in a corner. You have a chance to show the real power of the Revolutionary Brotherhood. Only if we all stand together to fight for our freedom will the slogan, Freedom, Equality, Brotherhood, be truly fulfilled. It's going to knock well, him into the... confused oh. us. What on earth made you negotiate with hags? Okay, they're doubtful. We got a success, though. They're doubtful, but that's... Could have been worse. They're not irritated. 
Rule of women. They can have a brothel. Let them rule that. For the glory of the new world! Yowza. Okay. Um... Dinner with officers, evening with the soldiers, safe path, barricades. We could go ahead and do barricades right now and not have to say, let's do evening with the soldiers. Maybe it'll raise, uh, there's nothing that we can do that our Bernard and Matilda aren't going to hate us for. Dangerous. Excellent. Oh, crap. Oh, we're being hit on multiple fronts now. The rebuilding has been completed. The hideout has been transformed into a help center. From now on, every time you lose a logistics specialist in a fight, you'll be able to recruit a new one here. Help center? Recruit a logistics specialist. Okay. Sure. I don't know what that means, but we're going to give it a shot. Hold the line! Hold the door! Alright, we're just going to let the general do his business here. Um, we can't reinforce. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. He can't be at two places at once. So let's do the quick battle here. Oh, wow. Okay, that worked. Eh. We lost troops, but we survived. We're keeping them... We're keeping them kind of put here. Contained. Now let's reinforce the line here. This seems to be our best spot. One, two, three, four. Um, what did I have before? Did I just have? Six, four, two. Yep, that'll work. And you know what? We're just going to do this. We're going to move six infantry here. Four musketeers. Six, four, one, and... And, you know, a single city guard. Alright. We've got a bit of a surplus here, guys. Um, I'm not going to lie. Part of me wants to start reinforcing some of the other zones. So, let's at least see what we can do. We'll reinforce this area. Days left before relief comes. Eight. Oh, God. Yeah, Kath, get out of my head. <laughs> that happens way too much. All right. We convinced the men. Madame de Stael counts on unity among women. Let us show her that female unity is as fragile as the bonds between men, which is true. When power and money are at stake, empathy and compassion cease to be important. Of all the women who could have, some, could, who could have something on Madame de Stael, Grace Elliot would be the most efficient. She knows the Madame's world well. There is no time for subtleties. Imprison her. 
then promised to let her go in exchange for information. Cold-blooded. All right, escape, people. One hundred and six thousand have gotten out, and thirty-one thousand have not. And this zone is now completely devoid of civilians. Day four. This may be the last day in the uh, stream, guys. Oh, holy crap, it's, um, Filch. From Harry Potter. And everyone wants him dead. So these, these court cases are literally just to give us breathing room. So if we do death penalty... Yeah, if we acquittal, it's game over. We have to kill him. Whoever this is. So I'll tell you what. This is actually going to be a good place to go ahead and end the episode. Um, I'm... Not exactly sure. Was it Filch? Is that his name? The uh, groundskeeper from Hogwarts? Yeah, that's a... Yeah. Good thing wars are so terrible, lest men grow to like it. I'm not huge on the Harry Potter lore, so... But that looks just like him. So, what we're going to do here, guys, is we're going to go ahead and end the stream here, and we have a, we have quite a few days to go before we're relieved. So we just have to hold the line and hope that something good comes of all of this. But I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Um, at least we had a few cases where the, <laughs> the outcome of it was pretty cut and dry. Shink. As in cut. And yeah, we're gonna, let's go ahead and raid someone, but let me do the outro for YouTube. Um, as I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you very much, everyone in chat, for um, contributing and chatting during the stream. That is always a very welcome thing to see. And if you guys haven't followed the channel, please do so. I try and stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, unless real life or something else gets in the way. And if you're watching this on YouTube, I have a link to the Twitch channel in the description below. Like, share, subscribe. You guys know the drill there. And we will see you next time. Later days, everyone.